Hello, everyone, and welcome back to A God Shift. I am your host, Shana Rattler, and thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. So before we get started, I'm going to ask the same thing that I ask every single week, and that is for a favor. Yes, this is one of the few times that it's okay for you to ask somebody to do something for you before they've done something for you. I think I might have messed that up, but that's okay, too. So I would love if you guys would take a screenshot of wherever it is that you are listening to this podcast, whether it's your phone, your tablet, your computer. And when you do that, take that screenshot and post it on your social media. When you post it on your social media, please tag us here at A God Shift. And when you do, I would love to hear your biggest aha moment or your biggest takeaway. Why do I do that? I don't really care about the metrics. I'm not really concerned about how many downloads I've had. I honestly don't even know how many downloads this podcast has had. I don't really care about those things. But what I do care about is building the kingdom. What I do care about is changing people's <laughs> lives and transforming people when they need hope, when they need to overcome something, maybe they need more faith. And so the more times that these episodes are shared, the more opportunities that we have for that to happen. So thank you in advance for that. All right, I am going to tell you all a little bit about my guest, and then we are going to get into what I believe is going to be a beautiful, no pun intended, and you'll find out why, conversation. So my guest today is the author of It's Okay to Be Beautiful, 30 Days to Healing, Health, and Hope for a Beautiful Life. She is also the founder and lead pastor of LAP Ministries Incorporated. She has a very good goal and mission, in my opinion, and that is to encourage faith-filled women to discover their identity through the creator, Father God, and learn to incorporate healthy lifestyle changes daily for healing the mind, body, and spirit. So welcome to the show, Lori Potts. Thank you, Shayla. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. I'm glad to have you here. So I want to just lay a bit of context for the conversation for those that might be listening to a God shift for the first time. So my definition of a God shift is the moment that you unlock your kingdom authority, collide with God's purpose, and move into a greater destiny. And, you know, kingdom authority seems to be one of those things that people automatically get it right away or they automatically don't get it right away. So what I like to say is, is that in Genesis 1 and 26, when the Lord said, make man in my image and my likeness so that he will have dominion over the earth. That's one of the scriptures that talks about authority. Dominion is actually mentioned 44 times in the Bible, but that's one of the scriptures that tells us that we have authority. In Luke 10 and 19, it tells us that we will be able to overcome the power of the enemy. And in John, I think it's 14 and 12, it says, greater works than these shall you do in my name because I'm going with the Father. So those are just a few anchor scriptures that kind of demonstrate the authority that we have as believers. But in a very watered down and easy to understand definition, I believe that kingdom authority is the fact that when we were born, we were given the right to be able to do what Jesus did and more. Why? Because God is not here on earth. Jesus is no longer here on earth, but we do have the Holy Spirit that operates within us. And there is a power that we have that gives us the ability to make things happen in our lives and the lives of other people. So that's my view on kingdom authority. But Lori, I always ask every single one of my guests, what is your own personal definition of kingdom authority? My personal definition of kingdom authority is the power of the Holy Spirit. I fully agree with you. It's operating in me and through me to accomplish everything that God has given me to do for his kingdom. Um, it, we all have our own assignments. We are all, we all have our own stories and each one can be used for his glory. It's all about his glory, not mine, but what he would have me do with what he has given me to share with others. 
Yeah, I, I love that definition. It's, it's always interesting to me because everybody that I interview has a completely different definition and they're all so powerful and so profound. A couple of them I think I've stolen and repurposed. Um, I borrowed it, I, think I stole it, but um, I, would, I, would, I would be curious to know, Lori, so if you think about your life, if there was ever a time that you either had to grow your faith or overcome adversity to get to where you are now, and you actually had to say, okay, God, I know what you're capable of, but now I know what I need to do. How did you ever exercise your kingdom authority to get to where you are today? Well, to be perfectly honest, Shana, my story is so deep. There are so many different facets. I was raised in an abusive alcoholic family um, and then overcame a marriage to a narcissist and entered into what is now my family. Um, but I would have to say that the challenge where that began, um, where I had to really dig down deep mm -hmm. and anchor my feet in to the word of God was when I, I told God, yes, when I responded to his call on my life, yeah. um, I, I can see it clearly as it was just yesterday, um, going down front, we were having a gathering at the church I attended and I went down front and I just laid it down. I totally submitted my life and I told God and I cried out to him. I just want all of you. Yes. I want all of you and totally surrendered. And you know, he, he was quick to respond. You say yes, he is quick to respond. He's like, okay, this one's willing. And I said, what can I do? What can I do, Lord? What's my next step? And he said, start at home. Wow. He said, start at home. And that's exactly what I did. I started at home. And that's when it was as if I had unlocked all the fury of hell. <laughs> because we all know that the minute we say yes, that's going to stir up the enemy. Oh, yeah. And he is going to do everything he can to stop you from stepping into your, your authority, into your kingdom call. I think you brought up two great points, Lori. Number one, the fact that surrender is a form of authority. And that may sound counterintuitive because when we think about what surrender is, surrender is, Lord, I give up. Like, I don't quit. I'm not going to just throw in the towel, but I give up to my own ways. I have no idea what to do at this point. And I completely surrender to what it is that you want to do in my life. And so for the average person, they could think, well, that's not really authority, but it is. Because yes. like you said, once you surrender, that's when he gave you this, the instructions. And so I had a life coach tell me before I even knew that I was being called to ministry, Shana, everything that you desire is on the other side of surrender. Yes. I think the other thing that I heard you say that is really great for the audience to make sure that, that they're writing down is that just because you're living a surrendered life, just because you're living a life for Jesus, that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. No. You know, the word doesn't tell us that with faith, it's going to be easy. It tells us that with faith, it's going to be possible um, because you're absolutely right. You know, if the enemy is not bothering you, that's because you're not a threat to him. And the moment you say yes to God and you want to align with his will and his word and his ways, that's oftentimes when he really tries to attack you the most or attack you through other ways. Real briefly, I know for myself, by the time I got to the point that I had accepted my calling to ministry, I was a little bit too deeply rooted for him to attack me personally and get my attention and get me off. But what he did was he attacked me through my seed. So he'll find a way to try, you know, to try to weasel his way in. So I don't want by any stretch of the imagination for anybody to think, oh, all I got to do is live for Jesus and everything's going to be perfect. It's not. <laughs> so Lord, what did you learn during that process? So you're down at the front, you're surrendering. The Lord tells you to start at home. You're pro I'm assuming you're probably off to the races at that point. What did you learn during this whole process? I learned that the only way to keep moving forward is by the power of the Holy Spirit, to be able to use those kingdom, use that kingdom authority to take hold 
and overcome each and every attack, each and every attack, everything has to be cast down by the word of God. Um, if it wasn't for the word of God, I don't think I would have survived learning that I have to speak forth his word, just as Jesus did when he was tempted. You know, Jesus is our best example of how to live. And I have spent the last 10 years um, studying and getting to know and growing a knowledge of Jesus, mm -hmm. how he loved, how he lived, how he did his battles, how he walked those out and how he overcame, how he surrendered to the yeah. will of God. And so that is something that's super important to me is um, speaking forth that word of God. And just like Jehoshaphat, another thing that we, um, I think we, we fail to see is that one of the most effective weapons against the power of darkness is worship. Yes. Worship is so critical. And there are times that Shana, I would just sit and worship God, turn on praise and, and praise and worship music and sit and just let his love and peace just wash over me. Because if I hadn't had those times of intimacy with God during praise and worship, I don't think I would have survived. That's so good. I love, I love that you said, I modeled what Jesus did, right? So when, when we're sitting here and we're thinking, I don't really know what to do or how to do it. Go to the gospels, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. Mark. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Those it are the is. <laughs> That's not right, but it is right. Um, because those are the books that tell you so much about what Jesus did while he was on earth. And so if you have a question about how you walk this life out, just model Jesus. You can't go wrong if you do. Amen. Amen to that. Um, he's our best example. And I think that that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yes. We, we were called to, to model Jesus. And that is part of our story in, um, in overcoming the obstacles that we faced in our life. That's our story, how Jesus walked through those obstacles. And people are strengthened by hearing our testimony, by the words of our testimony. We know yeah. that, that people are saved. And so that's, that's our goal. That's it. That's, that's our mission in life. And so um, I, I pray that each and every day I'm able to <laughs> exemplify that to people. I want to be an example of Jesus's love. And I just, the word is so cool. The word, yeah. you know, the word of God is just absolutely amazing. I am amazed week after week after week of learning and growing that everything is in there. Everything we need is in there. We just have to look. We have to be willing to do the work. That is one of the best things I've heard all week. The word of God is so cool. So <laughs> we're going to pause and take a quick break. And when we come back, Lori, we're going to give some tips of how people can begin to put all this together in their lives. Awesome. This episode is brought to you by the free guide, When God Says Shift. Inside, you'll discover the four shifts required to follow God's plan to move you into a greater destiny, expectancy, and possibility. Head to GodSaysShift.com. That's GodSaysShift.com to access it now. Well, one of the things that I love to do is I love to go beyond information and I like to get into transformation. And I think that the only way that we can really transform people's lives is by giving them tangible things that they can do. One of the things that always aggravated me about church or speakers or teachers is they would give you this, you know, this very gray and abstract thing that you should do and they would tell you why but not how like you need to surrender you need to do the work like what does all that stuff mean like I want to be able to if this is the week that I'm going to try to do the work I want to be able to look back and know that I did the work but if I have no idea how to walk that out then oftentimes I can stay stuck so Lori if you are talking one-on-one -on -one with someone who is listening to this podcast episode and they're like, you know what? I got it now. I actually do have the authority 
to cause the circumstances in my life to shift. God has the power. I have the authority. The two of us together, we can get to such a greater place, but I don't have any idea how to do that. What would be your best tip that you could give them for how they exercise their authority to change the circumstances in their life? Oh gosh, the first step I think comes with in Psalms 139, God tells us to call on him to search our hearts. Let, um, let him reveal any grievance, any, anything that we have in our hearts against our fellow brothers and sisters. We mm -hmm. are to have him search and he is always faithful to bring those things forward that we need to get out of our lives, uproot that bitterness, get rid of the unforgiveness, because that is the goal. That is the beginning of healing is forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. I often say um, healing comes from forgiveness every minute of every hour of every day everyone. It doesn't matter if you're in the grocery store and somebody cuts you off in an aisle, forgive, let it go. Don't harbor that bitterness because even those small little grievances can expand over time and cause us to be hostile. And we, we don't want that. We don't want any kind of, of uh, bitterness to grow roots in our hearts. We got to dig up those roots because from the very earliest of the ages, we are taking in those grievances. We are, we're offended. We get offended and it, and without that forgiveness, immediate forgiveness, then it can grow and take root in our hearts. So that's number one, most important thing is have the Holy spirit, just search your heart, search my heart, Lord, let me know what is it that is grieving you and let me be able to forgive those things. Let me be forgiven of those things. That reminds me of something that I heard someone say last week. They said, you have to heal what is hidden, right? Yes. You know, it's not a scar. It's not a broken arm, but we're healing what is hidden. And when you're talking about unforgiveness, that is something that is sometimes has been hidden in our hearts for years because we may, we may need to forgive somebody that did something in our lives decades ago. And, you know, healing is such a major component because healing affects every part of our lives, physically, emotionally, mentally. And I know that you wrote a book recently and it talks about healing and health and hope and how that is going to help us to create better lives. Can you tell us a little bit about your book, Lori? Uh, yes, it is. It's a unique compilation. Oh, so I'm sorry. It is a unique compilation of all of the things that we need to be healed, mind, body, and spirit. And so that's so very important. God is concerned for our health. God is concerned for our minds. He's concerned for our hearts. And if those three parts of us aren't in perfect alignment, then we're, we're hindered to con continue in the work of God, what he has given us, our God purpose. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important. I mean, we're not perfect. We can't be. We're, the, we're living in the flesh, you know, that is something that we have to work at overcoming every day. Um, but what we do is each day we keep moving forward. We keep trying. Each day is a baby step towards that goal. You know, the Bible says for us to run that race towards that goal and finish strong. And that's exactly what um, we need to be doing is taking those steps. So the book is a compilation of a little daily faith builder um, devotional. It's designed as a 30 day devotional. So you have one part that is a little story um, of building faith and then a health guideline and then an action guideline. So those are things that we can do all three when we apply those, they're just baby steps, just small little things that we can incorporate in our lives daily to move towards that total healing, because that's what it's all about is becoming the wholeness in Jesus.
Awesome. And that book is called It's Okay to Be Beautiful. So Lori, where can our listeners find you and follow you? Oh, I have, um, for, first and foremost, in my mind, is my website. I do have a website. It's okay to be beautiful.com. Um, and then I have uh, an Instagram and you can actually get everywhere you need to get. Once you hit the website, there are links to our Facebook, to the Instagram, to uh, Pinterest, Twitter. We do have a, we have a, a, a following on all of those platforms. Um, but most importantly, my best, best um, advice would be to get the book. And um, it's not perfect, but it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I know that I know that I know that the purpose of this book was to bring people to healing. And Good. so just have an open mind and to receive and make those changes, the small little changes each day. Awesome. And can they get the book at it's okay to be beautiful.com as well? There is a link um, to Amazon. It, it's available on Amazon, Books a Plenty, Books a Million, all kinds of the online bookstores, uh, Barnes and Noble, Walmart.com. <laughs> okay. And I will make sure that the link to all of those things are in the show notes that you guys don't have to remember and you don't have to ask is okay, the letter O and the letter K, or is it spelled out? I will make sure that the link to all of that is in the show notes to make it super simple for you. So Lori, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate you. And everyone who is listening to this episode of A God Shift, Again, please, please, please share this. And I pray that this episode has blessed you and that you will consider going back and listening to previous and future episodes as well. It's your host, Shana Rattler. You all have a great, fantastic day. Bye-bye. Okay.